The AC and heating blend door actuator on my 2015 Apala Limited needs to be replaced. Every once in a while I hear a loud clicking, tapping noise coming from the right side of my dash, kind of behind the glove box. And that means that the gears inside of the actuator have gone bad and it's probably not doing a good job of mixing the airflow like it should. And you'll know that's what it is because it's a very loud tapping, knocking noise. There's the clicking sound it makes, so that needs to be fixed right away. It can just come and go, it may not do it for a while, but eventually it'll start up again. To get to the actuator, you have to go through the glove box. At the very least, you have to drop the glove box down. I'm going to go a step further and just take the glove box door off. But first I'll show you how to drop down the glove box if you just want to go at it that way. Open your glove box and look towards the top of it. There's two tabs at the top, one there and one there. And you just have to press down around those little tabs. When you press them down far enough, it'll release the glove box and it'll tip down. This is the door it actuates and I can put my finger on that and feel it tapping and it's right on the side of this door, on the right side. There's not a lot of room in there, so to make it easier to work on, I'm going to take the glove box door off, and you can do that by removing these pins here at the bottom. There's one there, a uh, space for one there, but there isn't a pin, and one over here. You need to start over here on this side with a flathead screwdriver or needle nose pliers, and push this pin over, so that it starts to stick out here. And then you can just pull that pin out with your fingers or with needle nose pliers. I'm gonna take this other pin out. And then the whole glove box will lift out. So that gives me more room to work with. I set my phone up in there to give me some more light. What we have to do now is unplug this connection. It's on top of the actuator. And to do that, I'm gonna take a small screwdriver and stick it in that little slot right there. You kind of bend it out away from the side and then push up. I think I've got it loose, so I'm just gonna to try to pull it up. And there it is, it comes right off. This is where I was sticking the screwdriver. Put it in there and bend it out and it'll disconnect. And there are two actuators here. There's one on the left, but I'm doing the one on the right. And the one on the right is the recirculation door actuator. That's the one that went bad on mine. And there are two screws now that need to be removed. That one, and there's another screw right back here, just a couple inches away. So there and back there. This is what I'm using to take the screws out, just a little socket with an elbow. You need a 732nd inch socket to remove this screw. If you have a 5.5 millimeter socket, that's probably going to work also. They're very close to each other. And to help me work in the tight space, I bought a universal joint socket adapter at AutoZone for about four bucks. That gave me a better angle on the screw as well as good leverage to turn it. If you have a short handle socket wrench, that should work really well also. The handle on my smallest socket wrench was too long, so that socket adapter really helped me. I tied a string onto it because I am prone to drop things. I want to be able to fish it out in case I drop it. It's very tight in there and that cable's in the way, but I've got the socket on there without the handle, but I was able to put enough pressure on it with just turning the socket to get the screw started. So we're doing okay here. I got the first screw out. Just be careful you don't drop those down into the other part of the dash. So I'm going to go for the second one. And to do this one, it's going to be more by feel than by sight, because it's not very easy to get to. You say there's not much you'll be able to see, but I can feel it back there, and I'm getting it loose little by little. I'm going to try to finish that screw by hand now. It's pretty far out. And success! There's the second screw. And now I'm going to take the old actuator off. It should be a matter of just pulling it straight to the right and I pushed on this side of it and it popped out. This is how it was in there. It was being held by a screw here and here. And this is where the actuator connects to the blend door. Now I'm gonna put the new one on. And this is my new blend door actuator. I got mine from AutoZone, but you can get them a lot of different places. 
Amazon I know has them also. The new one's on the left and I'm going to turn that connection there so it matches the position of the old one I took off so that when I go to put it back it'll slide right on. And to get that to move I'm going to hook it to the power supply and make it rotate around a little bit. And you can see it turning there. I put the keys back into the ignition. That got power to it. And notice there's no clicking. Okay, I got it pretty close there. I'm going to try to fit it back on. Locate that shaft right there and get it to fit into that connection. And I've got it on there. And my screw holes line up where they should. One there and one back there. First screw is headed right there. Wish me luck. And I'm going to get that screw started by hand first. I've got that one screwed in most of the way. I'm going to leave it like it is for now and start on the other screw. And just using my fingers, that back screw actually caught in there pretty quick. So I'm going to finish it off with this. And the back one is in. It was actually easier to do than that front screw. Had a little bit more room where I could reach my hand over that cable and put the other screw in. I've got the back one tight, so now I'm going to tighten down the front one. I'm having to lay down pretty far over the passenger side seat just to get a good angle on this screw, but I think I've got it. And with the car turned off and my keys out of the ignition, I'm going to plug this cord back into the top of the actuator. So it's going to be oriented like this when you plug it into the top of the actuator. and it just snaps right back in. So we're ready to go on to the next step. And there are some instructions that come with the actuator. It says if you have a scan tool, install the scan tool through the OBD-2 port. Turn on the ignition with the engine off, select HVAC control module, select special functions, select recalibrate all motors. Do not adjust the climate control until calibration is complete. Select on and wait 60 seconds. If you don't have a scan tool, it says disconnect negative battery cable. Turn ignition on, wait five minutes, then turn ignition off. Reconnect negative battery cable. Insert key into ignition and turn on with engine off. Do not adjust the climate control unit until calibration is complete. Step five should take about five minutes. As soon as I turned the ignition back on, I heard a little movement back behind the dash. So something was getting adjusted. It sounded like the actuators were moving. Okay, it's been five minutes. Of course, my clock is messed up after all that. Let's see if it all looks like it's working. I'm gonna turn the air conditioner off and the air recirculation off. And it closed just like it should. Very nice. I'm gonna turn the fan back on and the air back on. And it opens up like it should with no clicking. Awesome. That went well. It was a little bit difficult working back in that small space. And for me, this little piece was a lifesaver. I was able to do all I needed to do with it. So, going to put the glove compartment back on now, and that'll be it. Not the easiest thing I've ever done on a car, but not the hardest either. And the main thing is, it works. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you try this out, let me know how it went in the comment section below. Bye.